Number three then from paper two of the 2016 higher maths. There we go, 10 marks here in two parts. The first part's that standard. Here's a cubic expression or later on an equation. Factorise it or solve it. And the second part is an integration involving the exact same expression. But the first part for two marks is show that x plus one is a factor. Well, there's two basic ways to do that depending on whether you're looking for factors or showing it's a root. You could show that x equal to negative one is a root by substituting negative one into the three parts and showing that it comes to zero. So you could say, well, if that's a factor, that means x negative one is a root. And if you substitute it in, that would give you that remains negative. So that's negative two. That's also negative because of the three negative signs. That's negative nine. That's minus three. So, so far I've got negative 14 plus 14 is zero, which means then that x equals negative one is a root. It's much longer this way and it's a bit of a dead end, which means x plus one is a factor. So one mark would be for getting the answer of zero. And then the other mark would be for the conclusion. However, that would only really be appropriate if all you wanted to do was show that that was a factor. If you want to then use that result to factorise this or solve an equation involving this, then it's better just using the factor. It's a factor if it divides in exactly and then do the division. That'd be the appropriate way. Now, there's two ways of doing the division. You can do it synthetically by using this evaluation table which doubles up as synthetic division, but it is primarily an evaluation table. If you put negative one into this table and rattle it through, start with two, multiply by negative one, add them up, multiply by negative one, add them up, multiply by negative one, the result is actually the value of this expression at negative one. But it also doubles up as the quotient you would get if you were to divide by this factor x plus one, so you can look at it two ways. However, looking at it as a division, that zero means you've got a remainder of zero. You'd have to state that. Remainder equals zero. That means that x plus one is a factor. Or maybe you want to write that in full. So there'd be one mark for showing this working, this synthetic division, and the other mark for stating the result. Another way of doing it in showing that it's a factor, that it divides in exactly, is to actually do the division, not synthetically, but properly. Which is to say, right, let's divide x plus 1 into 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 3x plus 14. Just like a normal long division. So what would I have to multiply this by to get x cubed? I have to multiply it by 2 lots of x squared to match that. So two lots of x squared in the appropriate column. And multiplying it by that would give me 2x cubed plus 2x squared. Then just like a division, subtract it to see if there's anything left over. Negative 9 take away 2 is negative 11x squared. Notice the same numbers are popping out. Bring down the next term and divide again. Match them. I want that. How many of these would go into that? That'll be negative 11x minus 11x multiply it, negative 11x squared minus 11x, subtract to see if there's a remainder, 3 take away negative 11 is 3 plus 11, so there's 14x left over, and finally bring this term down and divide again, how many of these could make that? 14 of them plus 14, multiply it, 14x plus 1, oops, plus 14, and there you are, remainder 0. And then the same conclusion. The remainder is zero, so it's a factor. That's why it's quicker doing the synthetic division rather than the proper division. But either way would give you the solution to part two, which is solve that equation, because to do that, you need to factorize it. It's equal to zero. You knew that x plus one was a factor, and if you actually carried out the division, either synthetically or really, you would get two x squared minus 11x plus 14 equals zero. And then factorise this part. Of course, you would have the option. You could choose the quadratic formula if you couldn't figure out how to factorise that. So that would be x would be 
negative of this, that's 11, plus or minus the square root of. The negative 11 squared, 1, 2, 1, minus 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times that is 112, all over double that, which is 4. So that's 11 plus or minus the square root of, now that comes to 9. And of course, as soon as that is a perfect square, that means the quadratic would have factorised in the first place. So you've got 11 minus 3 upon 4 and 11 plus 3 upon 4 for the two remaining solutions, the first one being negative 1. So that's 8 upon 4, which is 2, and that's 14 upon 4, which is 7 upon 2. Notice you could, if you did that secretly, reconstruct your factors from this. If that was the result, it must have been x minus 2. If that was the result, it must have been 2x minus 7. But you wouldn't do that, you would just factorise this. You've got what? Multiply to give 2x squared. That'll be 2x and x if it factorises, and you're just trusting that it will. Multiply to give 14 with and add to make 11. But one of them gets doubled. So 2 and 7, double the 2, 4 and 7, so that's it. Double the 2, and that'll be the 7. This says the larger one is negative, and that says they're both the same. And from there you get your solutions. x is negative 1, x is, and that's going to be 7 upon 2, and that's it, that is x equals 2. And for these three marks, the first mark was for stating this quadratic factor, which you just picked out of part 1. Second mark was for factorising it, or maybe using the formula. And the third mark was for stating the three correct solutions. So for part B then, this diagram shows the graph of the equation you were dealing with in part A. It states that this curve cuts the x-axis in these three points, A, B and C. And the first part is, so what are the coordinates of A and B? Well, that just says state. Well, you already had your three solutions in numerical order. It was at negative 1, 2, and 7 upon 2, but it does say the coordinates, so don't just put negative 1 and 2 or you won't get this mark. A is the point negative 1, 0. B is the point 2, 0, because 7 upon 2 is 3.5. That's bigger than 2. That gets you a mark. Hence, calculate the shaded area. Now, notice that shaded area is completely above the x-axis. It's going to be positive, so there's not going to be any problems. That shaded area, I'll just call it A, will be integrated from A's x-coordinate to B's x-coordinate, which is negative 1 to 2. So it goes from negative 1 to 2 of the expression itself. Because, after all, this area is made up of lots of little rectangles. The heights of these rectangles will be given by these y-coordinates. So that'll be 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 3x plus 14. That's the heights of each of these little rectangles. And the widths of them are the dx part. And then you add them all up from negative 1 to 2. Well, putting that down gets you the first mark. I don't see any mention of having to have the limits in at this stage. Integrating, opposite of differentiating, lifting it up. Add 1 to the power, divide by that power, so it's 2 over 4, but I'm just going to simplify that straight away to a half. Add 1 to the power, so it goes up to 3, divide by that power, so it's 9 over 3, but I'm just going to go straight in with minus 3. Add 1 to the power, so it goes up to x squared, divide by 2, well there's not much I can do with that, I'll have to leave it, it's 3 divided by 2. And 14 goes up to the length term 14x. Now, integrating it gets a mark putting my limits in here, negative 1 to 2. Now the next part is, evaluate this at the two parts. So it means first of all I put 2 in, and then I put negative 1 in, and that's where the third mark comes in, but they're saying interpret limits and substitute. I don't know why they just didn't have the limits there to begin with. Still, that will be a half of putting in 2, for, two to the 4, minus 3 times 2 to the 3, plus 3 upon 2 times 2 squared plus 14 times 2 minus 
Ah, oh, a half of now putting negative one in to the power four minus three times negative one to the power three plus three upon two times real paste this, isn't it? Negative one to the power two plus fourteen times negative one. There's the third mark. And of course you can now just type that into your calculator, but I think I'll go traditional here, so what have I got then? So I've got, well that, knock out one of the powers, so it's 2 to the 3, which is 8, minus, and that's 8 again, what well, I could have just said, there's an 8, and I'm taking it with 3 8s, so overall I've got minus 2 lots of 8, so that's minus 16 for the pair of them, but I've said, done it now, so that's 8, so that's minus 24, that'll knock, work, knock out one of them, so 3 2s, so 3 times 2 is just 6, and of course that's double it, 28, subtract, even power, so it goes to 1, so that's a half. Odd power stays negative, but subtract means it goes to plus 3. Even power, so it's plus again, plus 3 upon 2. Whoops, but that's minus 14. Comes to 4 upon 2, so that's 2, that's 5. Take away 14 is negative 9, but subtract that, so I've got a plus 9 for this part. Minus 24, plus 28, that's plus 4. Plus 6 is 10. 18. Final answer, 27 square units. But there's a the final mark. But again, in the exam, you would probably type it all in just so you didn't make a mistake. Although, you'd have to be careful when you type this in that you don't make a mistake typing it in with all these different numbers and signs. One thing I just noticed, this line here, where you got this mark for stating the integral needed, the limits weren't mentioned, but the dx was you wouldn't get this mark if you didn't put in dx. In other words, the height times the width. Maybe that's why they left that limits part to get included in this mark when you put them in. But of course, they should all have been there to begin with.